For this one, how about we dive into the very intriguing life of Aleister Crowley. Edward Alexander Crowley, better known as Aleister Crowley, was born into an affluent family in Royal Leamington Spa, England on October 12th of 1875 and was later dubbed by the media as the wickedest man in the world and the master of darkness. He was an occultist, a ceremonial magician, a drug fiend, a sex addict, a mountaineer, a poet, and a traitor to the British people. He was raised in a very strict evangelical household that only got worse after his father died of cancer when he was 11. His mother then labeled him the devil with the nickname the beast. But after his father's death, he inherited a third of his vast wealth, paving the way for the lecherous habits that would last him for his whole life. And the young Alistair used to enrage his teachers by deconstructing the Christian scriptures he was given to study and by rebelliously smoking, hiring sex workers for whom he caught gonorrhea. Regardless of all of that, he was a really smart guy and in 1895, that's when he adopted the name Alistair and enrolled in Cambridge University where he studied English literature, but he left school without a degree. But he didn't waste all that time, he did use some of it to explore his bisexuality and occultism, which he carried on throughout his life. In 1898, he met and joined a chemist named Julian Baker of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn who were devoted to studying paranormal activity and all matters of the occult. But what's funny is that the Golden Dawn considered him too immoral to ascend to the upper levels of the order, so Alistair left Europe and traveled to Mexico, Japan, Hong Kong, Egypt, and India. While in India, he began practicing Raja Yoga, and because of his love for mountaineering, he accompanied some mountaineers on the first ever climb of K2 in 1902. Unfortunately, his 1905 Kanchenjunga expedition in the Himalayas did not go as well when four of his crew died in an avalanche. Later, he settled in Paris where he met and married a woman named Rose, though initially the arrangement was of convenience, they did truly fall in love. In 1904, he heard the voice of Horace's messenger, which led him to transcribe the Book of the Law, which turned into his new religion, Thelema. And the main teaching of Thelema was a principle he lived by, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. An important part of the rituals in Thelema is the so-called sex magic, where they consumed bodily fluids for their sacrament. Let's take their cakes of light. It's kind of like Catholicism's wafers, except theirs were made with male fluids and menstrual blood. There is just way too much to Alistair's story to fit in this one part, so I'll be posting part two right after this so you can watch them consecutively.